Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you keeping? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Tom O'Mahony Show. Huh? What do you think about that now? I almost said Buckshot. Formerly Buckshot. You're going, how's this fella now? Last week it was Buckshot for about five years previous to that. But we decided, we here, the committee at Buckshot Studios, decided that we're going to just park Buckshot Studios for what it is. It's going to be the umbrella to a handful of podcasts that are coming up. And uh, this one is the flagship. Jesus, listen to me. I sound like I know what I'm actually doing. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much to the, all the brand new patrons that we gained over the last couple of weeks because of, uh, well, the special. The new special is up there called It's Clattered, filmed live at the, the, the Roaching Dove in Galway over the Galway Comedy Festival. It is out. It's up there. It's a brand new hour special that I'm very, very delighted with and proud of. And a load of people have gone over there. They have. So, you know what? They got the this episode. They got it last night. The ad-free content. Uh, you know, if that's your thing, if you hate ads, yeah, go over there. Also, you go over there and for three doll hairs a month, you get the new special. You get ad-free content. And you get the video to all of the interviews as well as on the 22nd, we are doing a live online show with the Patreons exclusively. So there you go. That's all, that's all of that. If you are listening for the first ever time and it's Spotify, I suppose, is probably the number one one these days. Hit subscribe and hit the bell too because the bell then will pop pop up on your phone to go, hey, brand new podcast out by Tom. You know, it's the handiest way to know. And if you haven't, if you haven't, although a lot of you have, although some fly in the ointment has dragged it down to 4.9, we're on five for ages with five stars. Give it the five stars. Anything less than that, you're not doing me any favours at all. That's... Somebody decided, I'll mark it down. Some bollocks, but sure, you will have them. 4.9 isn't bad. So if you would, please give it a rating. If you can review it on whatever platform you're on, normally Apple Podcasts or whatever, that'd be great. And do a screen grab too, because Apple Podcasts are sometimes hard to get into because I don't know where you are in the world. And there's one, there's a different Apple Podcast for everywhere else in the world. Like you won't see the comments in Australia, Apple Podcasts, but, or the British one, or, or, you know, unless you go visit, you know. So if you do, please screen grab it, tag the podcast or tag me. And the owl Instagram is probably the best, I suppose. Yeah, it is probably the best. My comedy club, The Hill Comedy Club in Cairn, Tipperary. We're at two-thirds of ticket sales gone for this month. So if you are thinking of coming, grab your tickets. Grab them. Come on over. The 28th. We've had people now travelling from a fair distance going, He's not alright, this is a class club. We're keeping the standards high. The headliners are absolute killers. Every single one of them that I've lined up so far and for the next couple of months are outrageously good not just hey it's my opinion you'll go oh Jesus Christ how did he get them well I got him I, I got him much like George W. Bush back in the day talk about us a bit we get him we I don't know why I brought that up I don't know what I'm playing at anyway that's enough for that kind of stuff all you need to know is that I'm gigging about the place but the most important thing is that my club in Tipperary that's the one you want to come to if you want to be a Patreon you get some input actually on I'm writing the new show that'll be touring probably from the summer onwards we're going to be talking about that next Sunday Sunday the 22nd that's your thing if you want to come over and watch Clattered I, the more eyeballs on Clattered the better basically that's what I'm saying you know be great be great sit down with the family like a lot of people have maybe not too young a children in the house um, but you know it's up to you there's just a lot of cursy worsy words so it's up to you just saying a lot of people have sent me pictures of them with the fam watching it drinking beers like they're actually at the Roaching Dove with me and it's class anyway that's all I, the housework I don't know what you'd call that but anyway that's all out of the way moving on to today's guest I'm fair excited about today's guest for a number of reasons which will become very apparent towards the end of this episode we have been in cahoots this long time since our first ever episode way back in the day we did an episode and he came on and did an episode of the previously named Bookshot and it was powerful and now she's back she's back with a purpose a bang the whole lot and by Jesus Christ this one goes at 150 miles an hour please sit back and enjoy the absolutely brilliant Anna Capelin <laughs> right okay I'll, I'll stop bollocksing around no okay, just right. no need I, you know I'm starting the podcast from literally now you're the first guest of 2023 Anna what's Way! the <laughs> right okay that'll that'll do so 
and a banana. Don't want any confusion around the brand, you know. With that, you know what? The brand is strong with you. I like that. The brand yeah. immediately, I think, and that's actually got me thinking. I'm going to make a note about something we're going to talk about at the very end of the podcast. That's actually got my brain thinking there now because, yeah, and a banana. Are you, do you, okay. Did you get sponsored by Budgie Smugglers? Am I, am I imagining that? Um, I suppose, like, a lot of the stuff they just sent because they're legends and they, you know, takes one to no one, like. <laughs> So, do you know what? They're just, I don't know. I bought my first pair of budget smugglers from them and then I just always like shared stuff. So then they're very good to share with like, especially the rugby community. They're kind of very close knit with the rugby community. So, um, yeah, they're always trying to kind of advertise through like people in rugby. So they sent me loads of free stuff over the years. Like, um, but you know what? They just brought out a banana pair and I was in... Yeah, I was in Sydney there only a couple of weeks ago and I only had a couple of days there and I was like, there's one place I have to go. It's a new budgie smuggler shop in Bondi Beach because I lived in Bondi Beach for years ago and it wasn't there then. So I was like, I'm going one place. So I borrowed my friend's car in Sydney. I was like, going to Bondi Beach, down to Bondi Beach. It was pouring rain, ran into the shop, couldn't get park or couldn't pay for my parking. So I started like, okay, I'll just go in for the, the budgie smugglers there now. They had all the new banana pairs up. They forgot to send over the women's uh, swimsuits. Uh. Um, but they said they'd send me a pair because they were so sorry. Like they were like, oh my God, we can't believe this. I literally like, I came all this way <laughs> <laughs> from Mallow. Um, <laughs> the notion that you came all this way. Like, yeah, beautiful. I know. It kind of felt like it because I'd only the few days there and I literally was leaving that night. I was like, I can't believe you don't have them. But uh, it was a, an honest mistake now. So I must get back onto them now and get get it sorted and get my new budgie smear, bu- budgie, budgie smuggler pair for 2023. And I loved I loved it. Like the connotations that a budgie smugglers are you're hiding dudes junk in your. Yes. But it's it's a brand now and you just there's no getting away from it. Like that's it. That's so, it. Yeah. For, for anybody who's wondering, what in the Christ have I just stumbled into? Anna is <laughs> also known as Anna Banana on her. If you actually, when you follow her, because you will all follow her after this on Instagram, she's known as Banana Capliss. Capliss. I'm saying Capliss because it goes with, it goes well with a banana. Though it sounds good with banana. Yeah, Banana Capliss is kind of the nickname. It's kind of the brand. But um, it's, sorry, <laughs> stay in my hair here now. Sorry, I just just redo my hair. You're there just now. you're podcast. just. Are you uh, for the audio listeners? Anna's flicking her long, luscious hair around, and I've chopped, <laughs> I've chopped off my hair for charity. Chopped off the mullet for charity. You yeah. No, you knew it. You knew full well I did, and you just started flicking your long hair around the place, going, "Oh, you're t- 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 cutting me hair. Look at it." Right. And here I am, just with phantom mullet syndrome. I keep on running my fingers through fresh air behind my head. Oh yeah, yeah. phantom mullet. The hair looks good though. Yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. It, you know what? I wasn't overly disappointed with it. Your man cut it in such a way that he went. At least it looks like something's happening there, Tom. Because I've never had a hair where anything's happening when he he styled it for me and stuff. And he went, "Look, it looks cool." I went, "Oh, that does look cool." Because I've never had cool hair. I've always just had functional, military okay. style fucking hair. Like, and then I had the mullet, which also doesn't qualify as being cool. It's kind of anti. Does it? Definitely. Anything's cool if you wear it with enough confidence, like, and you definitely wear your mullet with confidence. It's true. I, I, I actually, I got remotely sponsored by well, sponsored to send stuff from you. Know, have you ever seen the Pit Viper sunglasses? Yes. I, you know, the ones they're like from the 80s, yeah. those big ones. I, I, oh, went, yeah. I wore a set of them at the Three Arena, walking on stage at the Three Arena. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> like a Yeah, dickhead. and people were like, Jesus, he looks great. I don't know, great, but. If nothing, at least I looked interesting. Do you know, yeah. there's, there's, I don't care if great or what, I, I just don't look boring. There's nothing worse than boring, is there, Anna? Like, no, there isn't. But you know what? Like, this is the same thing with budgie smugglers. I think kind of, do you know, people be like, oh, I wouldn't wear Speedos or people are wearing Speedos are only wearing it for swimming or because they're like a kind of a loser. But yeah. I think that now you wear it with a bit of like, well, I don't give a fuck. And it kind of carries its own. Um, it, it looks good like it looks even better the way you wear it do you know I think you know is that the way we're going because with high fashion kind of falling off a cliff at the minute like you know uh, we don't have to get into Balenciaga and the mad shit they were up to like but it got to such a point where people were like oh my god I'm so worried about what I care 
is it getting to a point now where people are like, do you know what's cool? Is not giving a shit. Is it? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. But you know what, though? And this is the thing around kind of like um, hipster was the new way of like not giving a shit. But now it, people try really hard to look hipster. Oh, God. So the pendulum swings, you know, the pendulum swings up and down. So I'd say we're kind of gone too far past the, you know, oh, I don't care. It, this was such a flawless look, but actually it took me hours. <laughs> it was like me, like me sitting here right now with my, with my, you know. But somebody would like could spend hours to try and get that. Do you know what I mean? If you were trying to, you know, it's like. Uh... I'd say most people would spend hours trying to look like this now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In in the in the um the lovely setting with the I, curtains and the, mm. like I said, you have you have cornicing, like you actually have cornicing and like Grecian cornicing in, in in the top of your wall, and you have pictures on the wall, which is the most adult look. Look at my fucking studio looks like a child put it together. Like I literally yeah. have it uh, for some real reason. I have a wheel of fortune. I don't. I bought that and and I've never once used it. <laughs> I... It's like me buying the microphone. <laughs> it's, only for, it's only for Instagram posts. <laughs> Never I... once recorded what they had to say. I, I wish I could even say I did something with it. But like we didn't bring it out over Christmas to like it's it's it never served a purpose. There was a notion at some stage. Do you know yeah. what? We for the sake of it, we may repurpose it in the future, myself and yourself. Maybe well, just for the crack. Though. There's yeah, something yeah, yeah. there. We'll but you've got Keith Darrell's there behind you, very kind of prominently. Yeah, I read a, I read a book. I read a book. I did. So that's, <laughs> I put up a book. <laughs> I put up a book okay, to look so at. The, it's more a celebration that you read the book. Yeah. I read, I re- read all those books up there. Oh, shit. They don't even have pictures on the front of them, which means they're no. serious. Mm. <laughs> no, I, I have, I have in my eye. That's uh, my dad's historian. You actually, you had the pleasure of uh, meeting my dad there a minute ago before we started the podcast. He, 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 uh, he waltzed in. But um, yeah, my dad's a local historian. So is he? The place is full of books. He is. That's class. It's like, okay, my old man would absolutely melt your old man's head. Oh, oh my God. About, and is it local stuff? Because my family's people wouldn't be a million miles from Mallow or either. So God almighty, my father finds out that your father Oh Lord! No, oh, yeah. I, won't, I won't tell him. Send him down. I'd oh, like to, you know, again. I guarantee your dad probably knew my my grand uncle, a guy called Bill O'Mahony, who was a historian. He wrote for the Limerick Leader and stuff like that. He was a local historian around Ballylanders and that neck of the woods. So again, sure enough, definitely they'll they'll have come across each other. Yeah, <laughs> I, love, I love that they might they might have been slipping into each other's DMs. Hey man, did you check this? Uh, <laughs> Check out the lid. <laughs> Have you seen what's going on down the castle? <laughs> <laughs> down the ca- yeah, down the castle. So what's what were you in Sydney for? Or because t- if anybody, if you follow Anna, you'll realize that Anna is the wealthiest person I know. Um, because she is she literally jet sets like Jake Paul around the world. It's amazing. I know everyone everyone's saying that to me, like, did you win the lotto? I'm like, I didn't. I had a small bit of money and I made sure that I went traveling with it before I blew it all on mundane stuff. Yes. So I obviously retired this year from from Irish rugby. So I had a big kind of plan to do a bit of traveling and um, kind of as a as a as a way to distract myself from things and as a way to be like, finally, I've got my own time now. I got to I've got to use it because like. I love traveling and it hasn't always been easy to balance with playing rugby, like in the Prem and with Ireland and stuff like that. So I just was mad to do a few trips. I actually, I went cycling last summer. I did a cycle trip along the Danube for how long is two weeks or three weeks or something like that, um, which was class. Like that was immediately kind of when the summer hit and I was playing sevens and playing tens and like, I actually, do you know what? I played sevens last summer, like social sevens with a yeah. team down in Bennett Arm. I actually, <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen that Limerick <laughs> tip of pig, but I can't say Bennett Arm. I know, I know exactly what you're you talking about. You know what I'm about. talking about? Yeah. I played at social sevens down in Bennett Arm and uh, I loved it so much that I was like, do you know what? I'm going to get fit for sevens again. And That's, uh, that's what I was always had, was terrified when I played rugby was... I lo- like I loved the idea of playing rugby league 11 aside. It was all running, running, running. Yeah. But it was 
it was typically in straight lines, but sevens, I never got a chance to play any form of sevens, but I just, the notion, you must be so super fit to be ready yeah. to explode at any point in any direction, by the way, you could just run. Yes, yeah. Do you know what though? Like, cause I obviously, I hadn't played sevens in ages. So I played a good few times over the summer and I wouldn't have been like, you know, super, super sevens fit like at all. But if you're smart enough to stay connected with the players around you, it actually works fine. Now right. I, I still kind of, you know, want to have the same in mind now for coming into the summer. I want to play loads of seven. So uh, loads of running. That's the only thing. You just have to run yourself into the ground um, to be fit enough for it. But it's great crack like. So um, that was really nice to play a good bit of social sevens. And and uh, I was like, this is this is why I love rugby. This is why I fell in love with rugby. Do you know, the crack. Yeah. Um, meeting people and like sunshine, summer rugby. It's, it's so much fun. So... I kind of was coaching rugby in Ireland then for the summer. And then I went to South Africa to play in the World Tens Championship. Yes. Um, which was class what's, as well. What's Tens like? So Tens, um, it's funny, there's kind of a gap in the market there for Tens because, do you know, there's seven professional leagues and there's 15s and 10s is kind of somewhere in the middle that nobody has really set up a, a, a league or a championship for yet so there's a few people kind of making a stab at it and this crowd that I played for um yeah they, they held a two-week tournament down in South Africa it was unbelievable um who you played for time. so they set up their own um franchises so there's four there's four actually different fa- franchises so I was playing for the Balkans honey badgers and then there's the Cape Town wild dogs and San Clemente rhinos and all these kind of um teams that are kind of uh based somewhere but actually you can invite players and the idea is that you have two European players two African players two Australian players so they, they make sure that it's a big mix oh, um okay yeah, so it's it was it was brilliant and like ideal for me because for me like playing with people from all over like you know the barbarian style of play is Love I it. just adore it and I just I, um I really like thrive in an environment like that so um I actually I'll tell you how I got invited to that ten thing yeah I because the Balkans just I'm going did some rich Croatian set that up now or what happened there it's like or some few like yeah. the ludicrous Georgian who has a big some lad who just loves rugby like just <laughs> you know pure European head in them it's actually um I don't even know the the history of it but like our coach was is from the Netherlands our manager is from Sweden and so our manager there's actually women's rugby is quite good in Sweden and there's a good few Swedish players that play in the English Premiership um right. one of them I know quite well I played with her in Harlequins and I went to her wedding during the summer and it was beautiful it was in like the Welsh hills right and when they were walking down the aisle i.e the stack of hay you know through the field <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, we were all sat in the hay bales the speaker didn't work. So they there was no music for them coming down the aisle to their, you know, to their wedding. Go on. And I leaned across to the, when we're coming to the end of the ceremony, um, I leaned across to the the, the best bird she was calling herself. The, uh, like the, maid <laughs> the best bird. And I, I, I know her as well from playing rugby with her. And I was like, is the speaker working? She was like, it's not. I was like, okay, what was the song that they were going to walk down the aisle to out of the, the ceremony. And she said, dog days are over by uh, Florence and the Machine. I was like, right, I'll sing it. So I sang them out of the thing and they didn't have a clue what was going on because they like, they were like, oh, and I just started singing. Like they hadn't planned it at all. They wanted to hear it on a speaker. Oh my I was God. Like, I don't want, you know, yeah. it. let's go for it here. And Love I, it. We're kind of telling people all around us so people had the words in front of it. But it's actually such a cool one because it's like, run fast for your mother, fast for your father. So everyone was like clapping and singing. Ah. And, and they walked off up the field and it was great crack. And like, so the manager of that Honey Badger's team was at that wedding and she was like, you have to come play tennis for my team. <laughs> oh my so God. Because I was back in Africa, I got my, my two, two weeks down in South Africa. So yeah. 
Oh, I love that. But you know what? I love hearing them stories too. Where, well, I just wandered into a scenario because who was who had a, a, his whole life has been like that? Is you know Dave from uh, D- uh, Dermot and Dave on Today FM. His yeah. entire life was, and then I wandered into this place and I just was sound to this bloke, and then all of a sudden this amazing thing happened. Or yeah. a couple of musicians I know things have, like that have happened where they're just yeah. So I met this couple, and the next thing they said, you'll have to play at our wedding. You're like, yes. These unbelievable turns of heart. But see, you're like, like have boots will travel. Do you know what I mean? That's the great thing yeah. about you. You're like, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I know. Slip, slip the so, ukulele so, in the bag and we're off. Like that's it. And I actually I brought it on my travels, my fucking ukulele, and I was like, oh geez, I'm, I'm sick of looking at it. But but it can get it can be the key into something. So it's always worth it to have it. I actually I was at a very fancy do. Um, over in London there in September for London Irish. It was like a charity event. And uh, they were asking me to kind of t- take part in um, something. And I ended up playing the ukulele. And they were so fancy. It was like, what is this like? And I was like, I don't know, is this lost in the crowd here? But whatever. And like this like big posh fella comes up to me at the end. And he was like, um, I was like, well done for, um, I'm not going to say well done for having the talent, but well done for sharing it. Because he's like, a lot of people have it, but they won't share it or they're afraid to share it or whatever. And I was like, yeah, sure. That's, that's it. I think like, I you know, that. I'm, how do you fucking answer that? I was like, thanks well very done much, love. For, well done for sharing your talent. <laughs> do you mean, do you mean well done? Is that what you're, I don't, I don't was that a compliment? <laughs> There's... Because because everyone is like, oh, she's great. But he wasn't so impressed by the fact that, you know, by the song, he was just impressed by the fact that I had the balls to stand up there right. in my ball gown with the little ukulele. What did you and... say? <laughs> Can you remember? Don't say you said it wasn't God said. No, 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 no. I wrote a song, right? Yeah. Do, you have, do, you have, do you want to hear this story? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, the fa- very fact that you went, you have a boldest smile I've ever seen, and you went, you want to hear this story? But you you're damn right, I do. Well, look, okay, look, prepare yourself for this because this is um, strap in. This is one of my best stories. Oh uh, my god! So much so that I wrote a song about it, <laughs> and then I'll get back to talking about the rest of my travels. But let's put a pause on that there now because you'll want to hear this, okay? Yes, yes. I was out and night out in Limerick with all my UL Bows girls. We played a match that day. The same day that Munster played Racing in Thoman Park in, it actually was 2017. Yes. So good few years ago now. Um, we were all inside a house in Limerick. Um, brilliant night. And fast forward to like kind of small hours in the, of the morning. And there was a load of us in the Strand Hotel. Um, the Racing players and the Bose girls. And there was a, I don't know. We all went up to someone's room. Nothing untoward going on here now. Like this is session on session on. Yeah. Session on. Exactly. And all of a sudden there was three girls there that were dressed for a night out. They were obviously on their way home from their night out. And one of the lads was like, we're having a session. Come up to the room. And I was like, oh, there's three girls there that are dressed nicely because we were obviously all in our bows. Yeah. You know, You're bows, number one. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, they were sat in the bed. That was grand. Um, there was a few of the French players, and these are now players play for Racing. Um, yeah, Teddy Tama, all these ridiculous names. Teddy like. Tama, um, uh, Wynne Laurie, um, Teddy Ibrin, like the, some of the best players in the world, like yeah. for, for France, for Racing and for France. And one of them was taking a video of someone else doing something like a magic trick, and one of them had his phone out. And one of the girls was like, excuse me, excuse me. Sorry now, sorry, excuse me. Um, we can't be seen here. Sorry, you're gonna have to put that away. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, you, you can't take photos of us. Sorry now, excuse me. Like said it like a hundred times and was <laughs> like making this big point, making sure everyone heard her that she couldn't be on camera or seen in this room. And I was like, um, what's the problem here? And she was like, oh, like looked at her friends and they were a bit like, oh, I, don't, I wonder should we tell them kind of. And she was like, um, we play football for Roscommon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to our Ross Common <laughs> listeners, we mean no offense, but holy sweet no, mother of Jesus Christ. No offense meant oh. at all. I just think but, that she didn't know who was in the room, what she thought was going to happen. I was just, I, I was so stunned by the response. I was, I actually went home. <laughs> Can you imagine? Was, the I know notion. What to say. That one of the wrestling so, lads go back to France and they're going, you're not going to believe who we had in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Ross Common ladies footballers. In- I know, I know. Relax, lads. Know, Put down I your know. fucking baguette. This is- <laughs> <laughs> so I actually wrote, because when I was invited to this London Irish event, we were asked to play Two Truths and a Lie or something like that. And because they were a rugby crowd, this is the story I told. And because they were London Irish and a lot of Irish um, people involved, it actually went down really well because there were some Roscommon people in the room and da da da. So I wrote a song about it. And the song is about one of the French players running off with one of the Roscommon footballers. (laughs) It's a match made in heaven (laughs) when you think about it, isn't it? So like, you know, (laughs) I know. I played for you sometime. Yes, uh, if, yes. Yeah I'll, uh, yeah, I'll play it for you sometime for sure. Um, so that is where we're at. I don't know how we got onto that, but... Um, I absolutely love the fact... Yeah, I love the fact that... that you, you said, that's the song I'm going to bring. Because you have... You've written rugby songs as well, like, you know what I mean? But that's the one you went, yeah. ah, this is a banger, lads. And the story type... You have to go with the story. Oh, no, yeah. sorry, they only wanted the story first. But when I was, like, preparing it with them, I told the story and I was like, I actually wrote a song about it. And they were like, perfect, bring the ukulele. So, yeah. So the, Eng- so. English to people, because I imagine you, because you don't give... As I described on my latest special... I said to, I was talking about a barman that if he searched for a week, the same fella, if he searched for a week downstairs in the cellar, he wouldn't find even half a fuck to give you. And <laughs> I mean, and if ever I could describe an an a capitalist, you don't you could you could root in, in the garden for a month and you wouldn't have one bollocks <laughs> to give somebody like. And I love the fact that you were there with the most posh people on the planet because English people do posh, like Irish people try to pretend to be posh, but it's only a few. It's because we have a few quid. If, you Will know, I tell you? Well, I tell you how posh the event was. Oh, yeah. Florian. Um, now, this was a London Irish and um, a couple of other charities event. So there yes. wasn't just Irish people there. So um, it was it w- a lot of English people there. But like, you know, very fancy event. Like um, it was the same week just after the Queen had died. Oh. And um, they invited someone to make a speech or sorry, a toast. So um, someone, someone is going to make a toast now and this big massive fella with a big blazer stood up with his glass of wine and everyone stood up and he just goes the king and the whole room went <laughs> the king and I was sat with a load of Irish and Scottish people and we were just like <laughs> knock back the wine there like um that's how that's how posh this event was like that's, so that that's actually perfect because no other thing could sin- like you would never get away with that anywhere else in the world to stand up with just two words. Mm. That's it. Mm. Just to stand up. He's going to toast and it's going to be fucking epic, lads. I'm telling you now, it's going to be unreal. And he stands up and nobody goes, hey, what? That's that. He stood up and just went, the king. And everybody. So powerful, like They were all like, it was pure emotional because she'd only been buried like a day or two before. So they were all like, the king. <laughs> <laughs> I started singing a Lion King and I took my cat out of my bag and I it up. Yeah. I to be honest, with you, I would have backed you a hundred percent. A hundred percent on that one. Good Jesus Christ. They they do do I remember hearing um I thought I, I had a posh English stories before about lads that I've met gigging over there and stuff, and then it got trumped one time by Andrew Maxwell told me a story. He, they were gigging himself and a guy called uh, Glenn Wool were gigging in Cambridge. And mm. it was, there were just two comics and t-shirts or whatever on a Wednesday night part of what they thought was rag week or whatever, but it was kind of a posher thing than that. Oh, yeah. And it turns out that they met people that night that they didn't think even existed. They thought they were LARPing, right? They thought they were actually dicking about and LARPing. But it, they'd done the gig and they came off and they were walking across the quad of whatever university they were in, I'm guessing Cambridge mm. or there. Mm. And 
they kind of went on a bit of a detour around by a river. Kind of, this is a nice walk. The summer's night. We've got ages. Would we just stroll back to the to the train this way? And they walk by like these these lads who are like tra- wooing these girls that were sitting ha, 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 like like we're talking the girls were off to pl- press some flowers afterwards and the lads were like wearing like boat hats and stuff Mama, ma. and it was re- like they looked like something from 1922 and the boys went oh they're oh this is nice so they stopped and watched thinking they were part of you, you know uh it was part of a drama group or something turns yeah. out when they heard afterward it was and it, it wasn't this is how this particular section of society these people exist they don't shop in the shops we drink, shop in. They don't drink in the pubs we drink in. These people still exist. Like the lads then got shown off the property by, he was calling himself the master at arms. And he was like a young guy too. He was he was actually a student, but he was in this old worldy looking security <laughs> kind of soldier thing. He went, well, Please. I'll give you a, and he, he actually threatened the lads with a ruddy good thrashing. And the lads were like, okay, lads, you are too amazing. This is like Disneyland. It was, but it got very <laughs> serious then. Like he actually fucked him out. <laughs> And when they talked, they would recite a poem for us, and he's like, "Get out of my university!" Oh, the girls were like clutching their pearls and everything, like, oh my, you know. And when they they did a bit more research into it, turns out that these are real people that actually speak like this, inbred as inbred as hell, though. Like because they all get married into each other, they all lose their chins. You know, the the way inbreeding like weaker society yeah. starts to lose their chins and jaws. And these people had no chins whatsoever to speak of. Like, so it was a... God. <laughs> yeah, it's a dead giveaway. This isn't what I came across now down in London Irish, I must say. I, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I was... <laughs> listen, to be honest with you, I felt a little inadequate with your amazing story. I just had to come out with something. I even <laughs> did, didn't even tell my own. I told somebody else's story. That's how pathetic I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> um... Andrew Maxwell, we did a we did a thing for um, BBC last year. Uh, the we were the, on the same team. We were like representing Ireland in the Six Nations sin bin. You do load of like crazy challenges. Right, great crack, great crack. That's, Brilliant. Uh, he never added me on Instagram afterwards. So oh, he don't, he won't. Him, he won't. I I yeah. gig gig him <laughs> three nights in a row. No, wouldn't no wouldn't follow me back. So you know that's. Yeah. <laughs> So well, this is we can start the Andrew Maxwell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I've got a new special out. He doesn't. I'm just saying. It's fine. It's fine. It's just it's fine. But they, anyway. uh, you did that. You, uh, you skipped over. How did you think to do the Danube cycle the Danube for two weeks? Is that a thing? Like, as I know, like it's not like walking the Camino. Like I've never heard of somebody cycling the Danube. Obviously, it's a thing. Do you know what it is? Um, I lived in. I used to. I lived in. Vienna for a year uh, I did my Erasmus there of course ago. you did of course you did yeah. that sounds like the, actually that sounds ridiculously posh I did my Erasmus in Vienna uh, back in the day I read a tweet actually the other day that young people now are calling it Rasm- Erasmus <laughs> <laughs> so anyway did my Erasmus in Vienna however many years ago but I loved it so much that I've been back loads of times since um I'm very close with the kind of the rugby community there. So I'd see them a lot and all the rest. But um, I knew I wanted to go back to v- to visit Vienna like in the summer. So I actually, it was when I was in Gloucester, um, friends of ours invited us over for dinner and they have did a gorgeous like old um, listed building house and they did a decorated lovely. But one thing they had was they had loads of, when you're, when you go to the toilet in their house and you're sitting on the toilet, you're in front of a bookshelf and all the books are about cycling. And one of the books was Lonely Planet, best cycling um, trips in the world. So while I was sitting on their toilet, I took out this book and started looking at it. And then I came out and I was like, do you mind if I st- steal this book for a little while? I'd love to read it and have a look at it. They were like, no bother at all. Um, after I came out of the toilet, like stealing their book and uh, found that bike path in it and I was I looked into it a bit and it was really nice distraction because I wasn't in a good place after kind of deciding to leave Ireland and and, and just kind of the, the season last season kind of um wasn't wonderful for me so I just really wanted something to distract me so put a lot of planning into it thinking about like um you know to how, how where to start where to get my bike from would I buy a bike would I rent a bike which way would I go and stuff like that so I'd actually I'd recommend it to 
everyone. I had a load of people following me, asking me loads of questions about it. Um, so I actually must put all the information together for people because it was such a brilliant trip. Like you could do it in, in a few days, like you could cycle across like along the Danube in like three, four days, like if you really had the foot down, but like I took like two weeks, I started a little bit earlier along the path in um, Germany. Halfway through, I took the train down to Salzburg and I like cycled around like the mountains and I did like obviously the Sound of Music by yes, I was on, yes. a long tour. Um, Salzburg is so cool though, if you haven't been, um, I de- definitely like recommend. Um, I think I went ski, did I go skiing there back Back when I used to have money, I think I did. <laughs> I used to, back when we all had money years ago. I think I went skiing <laughs> <Yeah>. in Salzburg. <laughs> well, you had a kid, so that's where all your money is gone. Yeah, well, no, it was gone even before that. To be honest, with you. I, was, <laughs> I blew it on tuxedos, <laughs> <laughs> cigars, cigars, and tux- women. <laughs> Um, but do you know what? Even for kids, like um, there was low because it's flat because that's a long. Yeah, river. yeah, yeah. Loads of kids doing it, like older people. I was the youngest because it was June, the kind of holiday season hasn't started yet. I was the youngest on the bike path by about fifty years. Um, so, well, that's definitely an exaggeration. But anyway, um, I would recommend it to everyone. It was such a wonderful trip, and you can cycle the whole way down to Budapest, like through Slovakia. Um, you can keep going. Like I actually, I met a fella from the Netherlands. You always meet fellas from the Netherlands on bikes. He was cycling yeah. from uh, Amsterdam to the Black Sea. What? However many thousands of kilometers, like it was gas. But you can like, you can link up kind of, he came down the Rhine and then you kind of link up with the Danube and you can go literally follow the Danube the whole way to the Black Sea. Europe is class, isn't it? Like Europe is class. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that statement. Yeah. We're doing uh we're we're doing we're not going far this this year because house builds and stuff like that, but we're right. we are we are going to a pirate festival, weekend festival in Wales. Um uh yeah, which I'm very excited about. We're seeing will the oh, with my siblings and their kids come as well. But it's like it's proper pirates. So we're going to go for three or four days as pirates. Cause oh, yeah. and then we're gonna we, what we're hoping to do this year, but we won't get there, is to do this will be up your street. It's the it's the Brothers Grimm tour. Drive so you drive around to where all the origins oh, of the Brother Grimm yes. stories came from. So it's a lot of them are the Schlosses around Germany and Austria and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And they, and they encourage dress up coming to some of the, a lot of them. So Oh, our, ch- our child is going to have a strange upbringing. I will tell you that much. It's uh... oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> dress up and and visiting the like sites of those places. Do you know what's one of the co- where the one of the coolest places I've ever been? Um, some people are really good at like visiting places like for festivals and for events. I haven't done too much of it, but when I was doing my Erasmus in Vienna, um, they organised an a, like a an Erasmus trip for all the foreign students, and they brought us down to the mountains, like. Selamze, like a lot of people will have gone. Um, I've skied there. I, there I, yes. I know I've skied there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. they've got, you know, the gorgeous mountain towns like Bavarian mountain towns. Oh. On the so Santa Claus comes in in Austria on the fifth of December. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, on the sixth. On the sixth. But the anti Santa. Do you know here we'd say to kids like if you're if you don't behave, Santa won't come. But in around like the, the the mountains like in in bavaria and stuff they say in, around the alps they say santa won't come and krampus will come i only found out property but i didn't oh, I, really? I saw this i we were in a bavarian were you town there? years <gasps> I've ago i've never met anyone else who's been there on the fifth Go and on. we we were there for a beer and wine festival years and years ago and i didn't know about any of this nobody told me we just yes, thought it was in this old well. Bavarian town and these lads came through dressed up started kicking people up the hole and stuff and I was like what the name of Jesus kids, <laughs> oh, kids were pissing themselves running in all directions one fella f- now I thought it was powerful sport but one fella did flog into into my pint I, or I, well it wasn't it was my proper stein and it kind of went flying everywhere and that was the point where I went now here lad I know dress up is fun and all the rest, but you have to spill some of my beer. And the spirit of Christmas is fading out to be fairly fucking quick. But 
stunning. That's part of it. That's yeah. part of it because I actually did um when I got back to UL, then we had to do a, a presentation about like some element of society in, in Austria. And people were doing like the education system and all this boring shite. And I was like, Krampus. And I yeah. did um, I did my presentation on Krampus and like I showed like pictures of my legs. My legs were destroyed because they'd hit me so hard with the sticks. <laughs> Like they literally yeah. just bashed me into a corner, like, like crossing legs. I was like, help, like I'm being assaulted. But like, this is all like part of it. It was the most terrifying slash enjoyable, like festival thing I've ever been to. So like, if anyone's ever looking to go skiing around like 56th of December or even just go there then and like, there's oh, the yeah. lovely Christmas markets. But the idea is that it's Santa's helper and he kind of, uh scares away evil and stuff like that but then he comes to scare the kids but like they wear these bells and you can hear them coming and they're like they've got the scariest like outfits and they're like <laughs> and like behind the mask like beating you with sticks it was so terrifying i i i it was love amazing. i love that in europe too where they don't they're not they don't want to overly coddle a child they go now this fella might steal you and be a bit scary. Like, we're gone very saccharine American sweet here where we're like, it's lovely and it's all going to be lovely. And the worst that can happen is some coal. The devil comes running up the street in Germany know, with a I stick know, yeah. and beats everybody. I look like we, because we did, we, I only found out all these crazy, I must send you on, you'd enjoy the episode. Myself and another chap, Jerry McBride, we have a show on and off called the Tom and Jerry Show. And we meet up and we do this. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We pick these ridiculous. Like we we did a two hour episode on Dolly Parton to investigate if she was in fact a saint, and we went through all the the stages of sainthood. Turns out she is, um, but we just did Christmas, uh, from around the world, and yeah. it was it was the most one of the most fun investigative things I did. But I found like in in Spain in Barcelona, the Catalan region, they have they are mad into poo, and Christmas. Poo and Christmas go hand in hand. They have all. I guarantee you've been to Barcelona, right? I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen the little pooing man, have you? You can no. they're they're for sale everywhere. I saw it years ago and I didn't know what it was. Turns out he's there for Christmas, right? So he's a little bloke <laughs> just pooing. And the idea is the kids moving him around the nativity scene throughout Christmas and the parents have to try and find it. And it's a bit of crack. But then there's another one where they what? have the pooing log. Bet you never heard of that. No. Excuse me. <clears throat> so the pooing log. Everybody gets one. <laughs> It's a log that just looks like a regular log with a face painted on the end of it. And you know, you'd often see at Christmas markets here, they make shitty little reindeer, right? Or they stick sticks yeah. into a log and then stick. Well, they, no antlers on this guy, just four sticks for legs. And they put a blanket over the back and, and you feed him kind of figs and stuff. You know, you put it up to his mouth all, and you sing a song going, here, be giving me sweets now come Christmas. I'm feeding you well enough with all that. And I want nougat, especially nougat. That's the top shit I want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas Eve, Everybody in the family takes a stick and beats the living shit out of this guy and sings a song to the shit log. He's known as the shit log to shit me out some nougat and don't be giving me any. The song basically, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, don't be shitting me herring because that's too salty. Shit is good nougat because that's as tasty. And you beat the living shit out of this guy for as long as you want. And then <laughs> magically, magically, the next morning, he's pooed a whole plethora of sweets for you. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That, that's why I love when Europe. Said, they don't. When you they, said, sorry, they don't. When you like, said they, the family, the whole family takes a shtick. I thought you were going to say the whole family takes a shtick. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when they go to their fancy cousins, fancy friends' toilet and read the the, 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 the Lonely Planet book. That's what they do. Oh, they, no. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? It wouldn't be beyond the poss realms of possibility. I was just reading it. It's like, like all of Europe, when you when they started looking into these mad things, they don't, they are actually haven't been tainted by heavy West West stuff in the way that they're still a bit scary. Do you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know, like the yeah. brothers, like the brothers Grimm story, all those stories, they became soft fairy tales when Disney got their hands on them, but they're still told yeah. as yeah. terror for children. Which I, I think I kind of like is that it's you know you're not pulling any punches yes. like 
Yeah, no, I think I, I agree. But I, you're getting me excited for Spain now. I'm moving to Spain on Monday. Yes, I yeah. <laughs> well, I'm getting me excited. I won't be there in time for the poo log, I'd say. I, I've missed that boat. But um, You'll be able to get your man, the little fella. He's called, Ka- oh God, Jesus. The people listen to this are going, you literally did the podcast to, uh, a week ago, Tom. He's, you'll, I swear to God, you'll see him everywhere. And what they've done is, They've actually made replicas now, so you can get like you can get like Darth Vader pooing, you can get Bugs Bunny pooing, you can get oh Putin, you, Vladimir Putin pooing, you can get whoever. And just <laughs> just as pooing. the FBI are listening to this, uh, you can also get Joe Biden pooing and Obama pooing as well. So just to clarify, we're we're not leading any which way. We're equal. We're Frontier. right down the line. <laughs> Very oh God, I'm So excited for this! I can't wait. <laughs> It's it, it seems to be that they're totally cool with uh, body function. That is what I'm saying. Is that yeah, it, yeah. The British way is kind of like knocked it out of us and all the rest of it. And they probably had you know their the hands they had in America back in the day probably made it a very don't speak about kind of thing. But in well, Europe, it makes people kind of less fussy about things. I know in Europe as well, like they're less less phased also about like nudity. Yeah, and they all they all like go into the sauna together and like. More things I learned on my Erasmus. I was like, "Are people wearing swimming togs?" They were like, "No, Anna," and they were like laughing at me. And I was like, "Well, I was like, well, what about the perverts?" <laughs> they were like, "Anna, there aren't really perverts here because it's not such a taboo." Do you know? Isn't that interesting? It's like in Portugal yeah. where they just they lifted all the ban on all drugs, and now apparently their drug problem has gone down absolutely down the drain. They have no next to no. Dr- know that. You're like, fuck, I pick Spain. Why didn't I go to Portugal? <laughs> <laughs> I start learning Portuguese soon. But come well, here. I, I'm, yes, I'm, you, um... you've got to you've got to hit the road. But the very exciting news, not just that you're going to Spain, obviously, <laughs> but yet you're going to Spain to your co- are you coaching over there as well? Play player coach, yeah. Class. Yeah. What where are you going? Are you going to Bar- Barcelona so, direction? No, I'm going to Barcelona. I'm actually I'm going to a town called La Coruña. And everybody oh, yeah. knows it because everyone literally is like Deportivo La Coruña, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, well, they're only in Spain third division now because they blew all their money on something. But uh, I'm bringing you their... over to coach yeah, their rugby team. Not... This is it. <laughs> <laughs> but they, um, like, if you wanted to be in Spain but be as close to Ireland as possible, this is where you'd go. And like when I spoke to the coaches, like about you know when I was kind of putting it all in place, they were like. You'll feel right at home because it rains all the time. Obviously not with the like Kerry accent, but um, the I wasn't too excited about it. But look, you know, it's not uh, it's not typical. Like uh, I didn't study Spanish for four years to go somewhere it's raining all the time. But you look, well, I'll, I'll, uh, right. his I'll all the it. time. I guarantee is not our all the time. I Which, guarantee yeah, it never is. It they go, oh, it ra- you you should see it, and you're like, it rained for three days in the entire year. That's not yeah. just because the rest of the place doesn't have a, any rain. In fact, you yeah, don't. Even, maybe. You'll find the I parts of Spain where they don't one. they don't have road gullies because literally there's no rain to go in them. It's like, <laughs> like they're. I guarantee yeah, you, it will not be like the west of Ireland. It won't be. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. I'll look out for the gullies and I'll let you know if they're there or not. Them and the uh, pooing men. But the very exciting news is we, (laughs) a collaboration is happening. If you can't tell by the entirety of the last 45 minutes, we talked like two teenagers on uh, MDMA because we're quite excited (laughs) by the notion. We're we're not on drugs. We're not. Well, I'm, (laughs) am I? Possibly. Um, We're we're collaborating and we're, we're bringing out our own podcast. Correct? This is correct. Yeah. Um, we we haven't named it yet, um, but we it will be rugby based. You can take mo- suggestions. Can take I the love suggestions. the idea of that I love the, I <laughs> look I kind of I mooted it earlier on. I think there'll have to be a banana somewhere in the thing. There'll have to be a banana in it somewhere. Right. We'll we'll think about it. Yeah. Exactly. The, the the rolling thought will be come back to us with ideas. Doesn't matter how shit they are. Literally, we're. <laughs> we will skirt around the rugby It's rugby adjacent Is what our podcast will be But it'll be based We're going to go around the, the Six Nations But we won't be boring The living bejesus out of you And if you've ever come across me Talking to somebody about rugby Down through the years of the podcast Including uh, Anna You'll notice I don't really nerd the shit out of it either And ner- Anna <laughs> Being a, f- a former international player Won't be nerding the shit out of it either <laughs> She hasn't a clue <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and you didn't have to have a clue either while, while you're unbelievably good at rugby. But look at we will see <laughs> us two will see ye all back in a couple of weeks' time uh, at the start of the Six Nations with an actual named podcast. So I will keep yeah. people abreast of that to go and follow it. But till I then, I can't wait because do you know you come out the other side of Christmas and everyone's like, oh, you know, New Year now, blah blah blah, and rugby fans are just like, not long to go now till Six Nations. Yes. So I am actually gunning. I can't wait. I love the Six Nations, and I love now because. The women's Six Nations is separate to the men's. Like when when I played for Ireland, it was always alongside it. So yes. we were always training at this time of year. So this is, um, yeah, this is another level now to have the men's like standalone, totally focused on the men's. And then totally uh, focused a couple on months the later, the women's comes along. Yeah, so I, I love it. I love this time of year. I'm very excited. Uh, Anna, right. Till I see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, safe travels. Gurmila. Um... And I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, let you know if I see, see any gullies or pooing men. Get me a pooing man, please. Statues, statues of pooing men. Oh, thank you very much, Anna. Sure, I'm not, I'm saying thank you. We're going to business together for crying out loud. So, the next port of call is naming it. Let's see, can you name it? If you know me and you know Anna, we're having a naming uh, ceremony of sorts over on the Patreon live show that I told you about on the 22nd I'm going to I'm tasking everybody with suggestions doesn't matter There, it doesn't have to be rugby related at all it will be a rugby adjacent podcast it won't be heavy because as we both know Anorex ruin everything the crack will be primary there'll be a bit of ruggers in there as well but it'll be mostly a bit of crack and the fact that Anna's moving to Spain that's what I'll be just annoying her about just asking her <laughs> what's the crack with Spain and then we may t- talk a bit about the Six Nations. So we're going to do the Six Nations at the very least, see how we're going, and move on tournament by tournament after that and see see how it goes. We might have an awful fall now before the end of this Six Nations, but you look at The crack would be had regardless. If you're listening on Spotify, do hit subscribe and hit the bell. Every other platform, if you're brand new, just go, yeah, hit subscribe to that as best I can. If you leave the five stars, mighty. If you can leave a comment, even mightier. Screen grab it, tag me on all the usual platforms so that I can repost it. Thank you. And, uh, oh yes, the Tom and Jerry show is going into production the, uh, early March. So, there you go. McBride is 100% on board. They're doing house renovations at the minute. Um, can't believe he didn't ask me to put a price in for it, but you look at it. It won't fall out over that. It is going into production. What's the Tom and Jerry show? Literally type that in. And there's a lot there for you. G Jerry with a G. Other than that, the Tom Tom bit is handy enough. It's it's the usual way you'd spell Tom. Um, it's easy. Yeah, you know, there's a rake of stuff there if you've never come across it before. A lot of silly content. You'll learn a bit, but uh, it won't feel like somebody's teaching you. That's my new slogan. You'll learn a bit, but it won't feel like somebody's teaching you. Anyway, with that, go forth. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And we'll talk to you very, very soon. Good night, good listening things.